Hello friends, I'm New Rush, and today we are going to make Imperial Assault Gun, the Hunchback. Time to go nuclear. The model came to me already printed. I prepared the tank for assembly and painting, cleaned up the marks from the 3D supports, installed magnets on the main gun and other removable elements. The model has several large parts, but there is a whole package of small anti-splinter chains. Assembling the model was absolutely not difficult, the parts fit together pretty well and there are grooves for large elements. The main inconvenience is gluing anti-splinter chains to the body since you have to do this with tweezers. All parts except the main gun and other removable elements are glued with superglue. After gluing the tank, we proceed to priming. As always, I use grey Nitro Primer Mr. Surfacer 1000, which is great for identifying possible small defects that need to be eliminated before painting. In addition, this primer also acts as a filler, smoothing out micro steps formed during printing of the model. Errors discovered after the primer has dried were filled with liquid putty Mr. Surfacer 500 and lightly sanded, after which second layer of base primer was applied. Let's work on the tracks and the lower part of the hull. I paint both of them rusty with one shot primer brown oxide. The tracks on this tank are integrated into the body, so I found it easier to paint them first and then seal them with masking tape before applying the main color. To create a rust effect, I use various types of acrylic paint, which I dilute with water and apply in layers. At first I use dark, deep colors like Shadow Rust, Old Rust or Dark Rust. Then I apply lighter colors using Medium Rust and Light Rust paints. Once dry, the paint creates a patchy, speckled effect I am after. So we move on to the dry brush process to create the appearance of worn but shiny metal tracks. To do this we use gun metal and then light metal dry brush paints. As usual I apply dark metallic paint over the entire surface of the tracks and a lighter metallic paint with light brush pressure, only in most protruding parts. To create a base for the main color I first of all apply one shot primer of sand. It gives a light sandy base which is convenient for working with shadows. I apply the primer in one thin layer and go over all the elements. When the paint is dry, we can start highlighting or rather shadowing the details. To do this, I use brown paint, brown soil to make shadows for all relevant places, recesses, riveting, fasteners, etc. Don't forget about applying shadows to the main gun and other removable elements, ventilation turret and parts of weapon turret. When this process is over, I apply the main sand color over the shadows using faded cyanide gray paint. This base color brings together the light tone of the priming coat the applied shadows. I chose a partial vegetal method so elements that are at the top of the model or positioned where light will definitely fall on them should be lighter. After the base color is applied, we can start making highlights. Using light sand gray and yellow gray paints, I highlight the most illuminated and bright areas of the tank. Now it's time for the brush. Our goal at this stage is to create additional contrast between the dark and the light areas of the tank. 
So using bright yellow-gray paint, I highlight the elements of jointing and decoration, small rivets, the upper parts of bolted connections, corners and protruding edges. Also, do not forget to check up and paint the removable elements. Of course, the brush work is a time-consuming process, but believe me, it is worth it. Let's now work on the unpainted parts of the model. First of all, I have to paint all metal parts. Using steel color, I paint the main gun, barrel and structural elements, several grills, detailing of the machine gun and turret weapons, all the hinges and handles. And of course, I paint numerous anti-splinter chains. While the pen dries, let's make custom stencils for applying large markings. As a base, I use plain paper with printed symbols and numbers. I seal the paper with ordinary transparent tape on top of which I place masking tape. This is a simple, cheap method that still gives a predictably good results. The main thing is to try to stick all tapes without wrinkles and use a scalpel with a fresh blade for cutting. I stick and smooth the prepared masks onto the selected areas and then tape everything around the mask to avoid unnecessary paint spraying. For the undercolor of the markings I chose grey base paint and the final white color will be achieved with setting light. According to my vision, optical and other lenses should attract attention to the model. On this tank, these are triplexes for the command cupola and optics of the turret weapons. I chose bright red paint as the base color for all lenses. The lens effect on the optics is created by contrasting colors, bright light in the lower left corner and darker in the upper right. Don't forget to put reflection on the dark part of the lenses. The final color and shine is achieved with crystal red paint varnish. When all decorative elements are painted, the tank is ready to be coated with aqua gloss clear varnish. As I am using decals, so the varnish was chosen with a gloss effect to further blend the decals with the base color. I use modeling chemicals, first mark Saturnia for installing decals and mark Saturnia for better welding. After the chemicals has dried, you can apply a second coat of varnish. This time it's ultra matte lucky. 
Now let's start emphasizing the jointing. To do this, I use model chemistry US Modern Vehicle Wash. This wash is an enamel product, so the preliminary varnish coating is a must. The main nuance of using wash on a 3D printed model is the presence or absence of steps and thresholds on a seemingly smooth surface. However, with a brush we can control the application of wash both in the recesses and around the protruding elements. Don't forget to apply wash on all removable parts. Metal details are mainly highlighted with black wash, but for chains I use more brown and rusty products, light rust wash and US modern vehicle wash. Applying washes is a time-consuming process, but the result is a model with clearly defined shadows and details. After the chemical has dried, I applied a layer of matte varnish. Now we can start creating damage and weathering in the tank. First we apply chips using a sponge and a brush. Using a light color of warm sand yellow, we create the effect of chipped paint on the tank. I apply chips quite randomly, but in those places where they can occur, the result of the tank used by operators, natural wear and tear, as well as damage received. Using a sponge, we apply several small dots at once, which we later combine using brush. On top of the light chips we apply dark paint chipping, which imitates the effect of rust formed as a result of tank paint chipping down to the metal. There may not be many such heavy damage places, so it is not necessary to apply dark paint to all light chips, only to the largest ones or in those places that need to be emphasized. Rusty chips can also be applied with a sponge and combined with a brush. Don't forget to apply chips on the removable elements. When work with chips is finished, the model can be varnished again. The last stage is adding weathering and aging to the whole model. First, I apply a small technical streak and traces of leaks, such as rust, engine fuel and oil. There are only a few of them on the model, so this is not a difficult process. The main thing is just not to overdo it. Now we have to create dust deposits on the model. I use light colored dry pigments, cyanide dust, negative sand and North Africa dust. With a brush, I apply pigments on the model in places where such dust and sand may accumulate the most, on the chassis, the bottom of the body, various recesses. To fix the pigments on the model, I use liquid mud, North Africa dust, heavily diluted with enamel odorless thinner. 
Simply apply this mixture liberally with a brush over the pigments, lightly touching the surface. Dust excess can be removed after light drying, when the surface does not look wet, using a sponge or a brush. After drying thoroughly, use a brush soaked in thinner to clean the surface. Well, that's the finish. All that remains is to apply the last layer of varnish and the tank is ready to battle. If you like this video and want to see more models painted like this, feel free to comment, like and share, and also subscribe to the channel. Good luck with your models and see you soon!